Welcome to West of Tulsa. I'm C.J. Ward, and we are broadcasting from Ventura, California, where else? And again, we got most of the group here. We got Dan at the controls. We got Gabe here. Yep. Beth and Helm are not here, and there is a reason for that. It, and that's actually partly our fault because we've been doing studio work and we've messed up our shooting days. Mm-hmm. And with Beth, her schedule and Helm and his schedule, they can't make it. But we're gonna we're gonna get that fixed pretty soon. Can you just All right, digitally put them in. We, we could. We could use AI I've done, and just I've stick done them that in before. here. Yeah. <laughs> uh, um, Jeffrey Willard. 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 I knew I'd screw that up. No, Jeffrey you Willard. And all you night practiced, long. I was practicing all night long to say it correctly. So you, Jeffrey Willard. So dangerously close. You did great. <laughs> really. Story of my life. And he is the vice president of the Z Club of America. Yeah. And welcome. Thank you. Thanks for coming. No, thanks. It, I'm so stoked to be here. You're a local. I am. And you were blown away that there was something That's, called West of Tulsa down the street from you, wasn't it? <laughs> exactly. First off, that just makes no sense at all. It does, it does. <laughs> no. Well, that's us. We don't make any sense. No. <laughs> I so, love it. Yeah, no, this is really great. And if I may, I want to start with a shout out to the show you guys did right before your break there uh, with Christina. Oh, yeah. Christina Jimenez. So yeah. the fun part is um, my wife has known Christina for decades, and um, they... We were talking the other day about getting some more Z Club swag stuff going, and she, well, let's we should go talk to Christina. That's her wheelhouse. That's what she does, and so on and so forth. About that same time, maybe that same week, um, suddenly, uh, what is it, Miss Mo- Mo- Miss Motorsport, Motorhead, Motorhead, Motorhead. 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 Yeah. That's right. Thank you. Um, it, suddenly, I saw, oh, they're following me now on 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 you know, Insta and, and Facebook. And I was like, oh, cool. Let's, what, who are they? And I checked it a little deeper and it was this whole program dedicated to women in mm-hmm. motorsports. And I was like, I am so drawn to that, not for the stupid perv reasons. For the, <laughs> here's, here's my quick story for you about that. So I um, went to college to get, I got my degree in broadcast management. One of the very first college things I had to do was work for the, the radio station at the school. And um, we had we were developing new ways of doing stuff. And, and they gave me the opportunity to go cover some sports. And they said, okay, I'll go cover sports. I said, but I'm going to start with racing, motorsport racing. This is down in Jacksonville, Florida. So I went to Gainesville for the summer, Winter Nationals. And I'm there to get a story really don't have a a plan or any background in doing this sort of thing. And I'm there. This is, this is, I'm telling this story for Dan. Okay. (laughs) Thank you. (laughs) I appreciate that. Thank you. (laughs) It's because my very first interview I ever did in my broadcast career was with Shirley Muldown. I knew that was coming. Uh, yeah, I knew uh, it was coming. uh, Yeah. And And so here I am. I was just like, pretty much pee in my pants, <laughs> nervous as all hell, had no idea what I was doing. And there was a huge crowd around her trying to get autographs and stuff like that. It's a big deal. And I, I managed to get her eye to eye contact for a moment. And I said, hi, I'm Jeffrey. I'm with the college, blah, blah, blah. This is the, I'd like to, she takes me by the shoulder and takes me into her trailer, her car trailer. So we were away from everybody and gave me this really great, really endearing, sweetest person ever interview and um i guess i just tell you that because that's how i first like yes women can be good racers are good racers yeah. It's, yeah. it's not about your sex it's about your capability as a person totally. as a human you know yeah, yeah and so to watch that now i'm like such a huge fan of Catherine leg and and the team that she's put of women together running in imsa and and the drag racing there's so many women are in drag mm-hmm. racing right now um, but sports car racing is happening. Bikes, I'm seeing that down under in Australia. They're they're getting so it's like yes, absolutely. There's no. Why is there even a perceived barrier yeah. about yeah. that? Yeah, you know, yeah. that's yeah. just BS right there. And, and Shirley Muldowney was a long <clears throat> time ago too. It's you know. Hey hey hey. I know I'm from the same era, but she was a big <laughs> deal, and that was quite a while ago. So what was what probably eighties. That uh, no, you... that was 78, yeah. Okay, 78. Okay, getting 76. Close yeah, okay. 76. So when we were discussing Shirley Muldowney <laughs> yeah. and at, at finding out what her nickname was or whatever, did yeah. you know when you were watching? Absolutely. You didn't, <laughs> even, get the, you didn't even get the question no. out. And I was like, it's Cha-Cha. It's I'm, Cha-Cha. The, one, I'm, I'm the one there. who knew, at least. Yeah, exactly. I'm the one who knew, yeah, so I get credit for that one. There you one. go. Yeah. You absolutely Good do. job, Is that a flex? 
That's a flex, man. <laughs> That's my non-car guy, truck guy flex, right? I guess, I guess in the geriatric community. Uh, in the yeah, geriatric community. Sorry, sorry, sorry. sorry. Be careful whose company yeah, you're no, in right know, now. Know, you know, you're outnumbered. But <laughs> I don't, you know, don't beat me up, please. Yeah. Vin- vintage is a better word. <laughs> vintage. There you go. <laughs> oh, are you beyond classic? <laughs> <laughs> Absolutely. Oh, my. So we're actually here <clears throat> partly to talk about Z's. Which I think is one of the coolest cars of the 80s, 70s, and 80s. Yeah. I mean, the Z car, when I was in high school. 90s, don't forget about the 90s. The 300ZX yeah. was no well, joke. Again, I'm going with the generational thing here. When I was in, when I was in high school, I graduated, graduated high school in 81 and a half. That's a different story. <laughs> but when I was in high school, late 70s, that was one of the coolest cars out there, Absolutely. the Z car. If you could, if you could yeah. have one of those cars. <clears throat> and then... You know, just I just love, and I mentioned before we started the show, my daughter's, my youngest daughter's, Natalie's boyfriend, Jake, one of his favorite cars is a 240Z, mm-hmm. 280Z, whatever. But he would love to have one of those cars. And younger generation, are they're loving these Zs. I, I don't think that should, age has no bearing no, on that. No, it shouldn't. Yeah. They're, they're, you know, it's, it's, I remember seeing the very first um, advertisement in one of the hot rod or magazines or whatever I got back in the day and and as soon as I opened that page and just saw the lines of that car I was just it was it was clearly even though I was you know young still but um, <laughs> it just it seemed like that was the poor man's Jaguar yeah. and that was the XKE of my generation yeah. you know like that's and so I was just blown away by it right away and then it took a while before they were actually in the states, and and you know, and one of the teachers at my elementary school bought one right away and showed up, and and so I remember walking out of the school building, and here was, and he got that that really I don't even know what the color is called, but that really crappy yellow lime kind of oh yeah yeah, yeah. A, yeah I know what you're talking about. about. I kind of I kind of dig it though. Yeah. <laughs> you do? It's it's so funky it's that you kind of yeah yeah, yeah yeah yeah. No, that's the kind of stuff my dog leaves on the floor and I have to clean it up. That's <laughs> it's not good. I want to take him to the vet. <laughs> but I remember going over just like in the classic child, you know, my face and hands pressed up against the window looking at it and I was just yeah. uh, I was so stoked. So yeah. it's always been there. You know, the Z Club when we were talking on the phone um, setting this all up the Z Club of America has had a really interesting, it's taken an interesting path to get to where you are right now. So give us yeah. a little bit of history on who started it, how it kind of went dormant for a while, and then how you kind of gave it the spark again. Well, there you go. That story's over. What do you want to talk about? <laughs> well, <laughs> my dad had a Z, and <laughs> see, I, I figured I would no, give the it, highlights, and you'll give the details. No, there, I'll, no. Uh, there, we don't have enough time or beer okay. for that. <laughs> <clears throat> but it did. Uh, the Z Club of America... Started 1971 by Joe Casella, uh, who, fast forward to today, he now runs NASA Northeast, the Northeast Division of NASA uh, Sports Car Racing. And he's been doing that for a long time, and he is the most qualified guy to do it. And he is one of the, everyone involved in NASA in the Northeast region, and probably throughout the whole NASA organization, all know Joe as Papa Joe. He's just that guy and always has been and um he's a dear friend we just love this guy to death <clears throat> i shouldn't say death at our age um, <laughs> so <laughs> um he started it right away he had if, if you really 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 want the details you can go to our website zclubofamerica.com and in there in our legacy section you can hear some uh, interviews i did with joe where he t- kind of tells his side of the story but they started you know as soon as he got a z started messing around with it didn't like the way it handled quite right thought maybe he just could change some shocks or change some tires or change some you know just make some tweaks, tweaks that yeah. would that would help it perform just a little bit better and started doing those literally curbside this is uh in the northern new jersey area and um one thing led to the next, and and he started to see that more dealerships had cars, and more people were buying the cars. More people were saying, you know, this could handle a little better. And he was like, bring it over, and he, he, they'd start working on cars. So then they started thinking, okay, we need to make these parts because everybody's going to want to make these modifications. Somewhere along the line, he gets the idea of putting together this, the car club specifically for them, and he starts that with a wonderful, simple motto that we still use today. 
Z Owners Unite. Right to the point. There you go. Yeah, that's it. And that's still what we do. And it's still the basic fundamental function of the Z Club of America. You know, is, is we, whether you're two friends in the same town or you're on the other sides of the planet or you're looking for a club or you just moved somewhere and now you need to, you know, you, like it. I'd like to think of us as sort of like the museum you have here, yeah. <laughs> you know, is, is, is just somebody who can become that resource. And if we don't know, which happens 99% of the time, <laughs> I don't know, we go do the homework and find out, sure. you know, and just spread the word that way. So the club gets going 1971. Um, Lime Rock, Connecticut, Lime Rock Park was the, the closest track, one of the most popular and fun ones to, to be on. And so Joe starts renting the track, which was actually affordable back in those days, and um, started inviting people out. And, and you've seen the photos. I, we, we, have, we used to just get a gazillion Zs that would all show up. And they would be there, whether it was snow, whether it was rain, whether it was hot summertime. And, you know... <clears throat> We called them driving experiences or, or you know, driver's schools at the time. The track day wasn't a, a, a thing yet, mm -hmm. you know, but that's exactly what we were doing. And, um, and I joined, so, okay, so that's, that's, that's how they really got started and going through it. You go a few more years, the 260 comes out, the 280 comes out, really getting to uh, full mass. I could be wrong about this, but I think Joe quotes something like 20,000 members across the country. Wow. Now, they're not all coming to Lime Rock to do these events with us, but, you know, this is, we're getting really great turnouts. Mm -hmm. Then comes the 280ZX. Then comes the 300ZX. And these cars are not the same DNA. Yeah. You know, it, these, are, these are cushier cars. They're funner. They've got more gadgets and bells and whistles and things to do and wheels that are supposed to get your attention rather than perform the way you'd really like them to perform, stuff like that. Especially on a track, right? <clears throat> Especially on a track. Yeah. Aren't they like much, much heavier too? They're oh. like the ZXs, uh, I remember. Slightly slightly larger than Jupiter. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I remember talking to some some car guys back then. My uncle had a two forty. <laughs> And when they came out and they were like, uh, it's below it's like a Cadillac yeah. Z. It's just well, you, nah. talk, you talk to any two forty Z owner and you ask them about what do they think about the 300, especially the 300 from the 80s, and they're just like, <laughs> yeah, yeah, right, dude. Yeah. Like you just, it's it's a 240 or 260, and even that you're, they're kind of crossing the line a little bit, you know, in the 280s, 280s. Yeah, yeah. The, yeah, in the 280s, yeah. 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 But anything past that, they're like, nah, it's those yeah, are nothing. They're, they're kind of yeah. yeah, that's all. They just didn't have the same DNA. They're, yeah. they're they're great for other applications. So the net result was we started getting less and less um, membership. <clears throat> coming to the events and being there. So we really had to start um, opening the door to either Porsche Club or Corvette Club or whoever else was you know, interested, just so that we had the number of cars we needed to make the math work so that we weren't losing our shirts every time. You know? uh, I joined uh, probably, I think it was like 1983 is, is when I, um, I <laughs> so um, I, had always wanted to be a racer since I was a little kid. And, and, and then that's just what I turned into. And it was weird because I just never had any, like my dad wasn't a racer guy. My, nobody in my world, I, I don't know how I got that. It right. was just happened. God said, <laughs> we're going to work on that guy for a while. <laughs> so, um, <clears throat> I started getting it as soon as I got my, in New Jersey, you had to be 16 and a half years old before you could get your student permit. And uh, I got mine on a Wednesday, that Friday night. I had thrown an older buddy in the car with me who had a driver's license, made it legal for me to drive. I took my car out to the drag strip and started racing. Yeah. I, I wasn't 48 hours into ownership of a, <laughs> yeah. of a temporary driver's license, and I went drag <laughs> racing right away. That's hardcore. <laughs> that, that is. So I proceeded in my, my racing you know, to just I wanted I wanted to just keep doing it, but clearly this is an expensive thing, and um, so I did everything I could to try to you know make the money to make it work for me. But the limitations were there. I said, okay, well I'll do it like the real racers do. I'll go get sponsors. So I started running around and knocking on doors and trying to get sponsors. That doesn't work either. You have to be someone. You have to have a reason <laughs> that they would want to be involved. Yeah. Oh, okay. Harsh wake up call. Thank you. And. Um, 
And then one day while, so all of a sudden it hit me and I, was, I, I decided the only way I'm going to be able to finance my racing is I have to create my own company. So I, I built a, a, a trucking company, a courier service that served all New York metro area and that sort of stuff. And, and in the early days, there were a lot of times where I would have to, you know, literally take the call and say, oh, you want me to pick up your package and take it to New York? Okay, great. Click, hang up, run out, get in the car, drive over to their place, get their thing, run, you know, and, and do it all myself. And I remember going, driving through Clifton, New Jersey one day, and here was uh, this, uh, it, it obviously had been built as a dealership, you know, but it was a, sm a small building uh, by today's standards. And what caught my eye was there was a Z race car in the showroom window. And I just, I still to this day, I can feel how hard I hit the brakes to stop <laughs> right there in the middle of the road <laughs> and then find a way to pull over. And I went over because I just had to see this. The place was called the Z Center, and they had nothing but Z cars in there. It was wow. all Zs, and this was Joe Casella's business. Oh, oh wow. And so that's how he and I connected, and he says, yeah, you should join the Z Club of America. I was like, sign me up right here, right now, <laughs> and I don't remember exactly how much time afterwards, but not long after, I went back to him and bought my first 240, wow. and I think I've had... I. In totality of my life, I've had seven Z's now. Most all of them were from, you know, that I bought at the Z Center from Joe. So that was my, that's my integration into the legacy. The Z Club continues to move along, <clears throat> and we get to a point where now there's like hardly any Z's showing up, and, it, and we're just sort of mishmashing all kinds of cars in what would today be a, a track day event. And um, in fact, we even changed the name to the PDA, the um, Performance Drivers Association. Because that just seemed more, you know, why call it the Z Club of America if you've only got two Z's showing up and Joe's got one and I've got the sure, other. Yeah. That was, like, not doing much for us. Is this kind of like the late 80s? Is that kind yeah. of in that yeah. area? Yes. Okay. Yeah, right. no, yeah, yeah, I would say so. Probably okay. right around that 1990-ish. So window. would you say the evolution of the club kind of followed the trend of the Z? Yeah, that's a great yeah, exactly. Like like I said, those 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 the next gen of cars just didn't. Because I'll I'll tell you when I grew up in the San Fernando Valley, um, I, there was two maybe three shops that I knew of performance shops that only worked on Z's only, and it was mm -hmm. not not the new stuff. Like, it wasn't the 80s. It was only the 240, 260, 280 Z's, yes. and those started dying off. Absolutely. And by 2000, there were, I don't there might be still one available or still around, but. The popularity seemed to wane, you know. After and now with the new Z coming out, I don't feel like the, there's a resurgence yet. The new Z is interesting, the 400 or whatever they call it now, the, or the Z. Um, but I don't think people are clamoring to it like before. Like, even the 300 ZX, you know. Well, I have a position on that. Oh, well, let's hear it. So th the resurgence is happening. Mm. Absolutely, it's coming back. With with the new car, or with the older the new cars? car is what helped spur it okay on. okay and in fact it was the announcement that there there was going to be a new z around 2019 the mm -hmm. end of 2019 2020 uh that's that's really what um prompted me to get it helped seal the deal for me to decide i want to take the z club and and oh. reinvent it and bring it back to life because now's the time if we're coming out with a new z again sure. the world will get excited everybody there'll be all kinds of buzz about it and this is the opportunity to oh my gosh Z owners unite, you know, mm -hmm. do it again, mm -hmm. keep doing what we always had done. So, um, I really think that your observation is, is accurate, but it's, it's not because they're not interested. It's because Nissan has just kind of done a crap ass job of getting the cars into the marketplace and yeah. into the, you know, the, it, uh, I don't understand the math of how that works for them, but they, they must know what they're doing. Sure. But mm. it, it just sort of seems to me if you're going to announce a legacy vehicle like that, not like you're coming out with something new, with all that great heritage that you're going to have all kinds of excitement and times, but you can't then go, oh, well, you in Detroit, I'll send you one, and you in Tulsa, I'll send you one. Yeah. And, you know, it's like, yeah, get the, get the truck and trailer here and then watch them, Spread come, them off yeah. and come off the trailer. And I think, get, every dealership should have them in the, you know. I think Toyota yeah. did that too with the Supra, the new Supra. <clears throat> you know, I was like, I, I was hot. Hot, but I drove one. I was like, oh, this thing's pretty sweet. I don't care. It had a BMW engine in it. It was fast. 
but it was hard to get one. Their prices yeah. were high, and then people were like, you know, screw this, I'm not going to buy one. Now people are selling them, and you know, it's still still high, but there's a lot sitting on lots because no one wants because they the whole spark that whole like um, excitement of oh the new Z the new Supra that, and then they made it so you can't literally like a regular person just can't, can't go get one right. you know on top of the price being you yeah. know astronomical it's definitely a miss marketing opportunity for sure with both cars I think based off what I've seen in the yeah. press and YouTube and yeah. reviews and so on yeah. it's like great cars but kind of fizzled out you know like they didn't they didn't capitalize like you said jeffrey with the history the history is amazing it really is the lineage and you know the the they always nissan always is so open to grassroots motorsports within the z family they're just so they like they really love that sort of stuff they, and they use should it to their advantage <laughs> yeah. Yeah. but they never put the money up to help us make it bigger or better or better they never did. You, you know, know, you know I was, I'm thinking of Mazda. Remember, you, you, yeah, that was just, uh, you're I'm on the I'm thinking of that, how good they are. Mazda right? is excellent at that. Yeah. You know, great. They're not, you know, probably um, always delivering what people expect, but they do get behind. I mean, they literally get behind seven stock every <laughs> year, um, even though it's, it, it's features of motor that they don't even make anymore or for production, right. you know, but they get behind their motor the sports. Name. Yeah. And it, yeah. and it goes at ebbs and flows, but they're always behind it. And I think that's a really cool thing because the Mazda fans, they are diehard, mm -hmm. you know, Z guys, I would imagine they're the same, but there's probably lots of frustration because the manufacturer is not backing them up with something that they could use, you know, but yeah. I, I could totally see that, you know, but do you think that's the key to sparking, uh, like the resurgence as far as the manufacturer getting behind the motorsports? I I can't see that hurting from, yeah. from the window I look through. Again, yeah. corporate may have a very, very, very different version. But, you know, the the trend has been there. Like the 350 and the, three, the 350, they sold a bunch of those. Yeah. They did good with that. 370, yeah. not so much. But that was an attainable car, especially for drifters. That's like the cheapest well, now drift it is. car. Yeah, now. yeah, But like even back when they were new uh, in 2000 two or four i was choosing between that and the s2000 and the only reason i didn't buy the z because i was originally going to buy the z they wouldn't let me test drive one i was like wow. so, I, so i bought the yeah. s2000 that does make a difference i it mean I've, I've had the same experience over the years it, and does. That, it does but you want to get in and you want to feel it absolutely you know? yeah the only car i bought that i didn't test drive but i came close to it was the the type r mm. and when i went into the dealership and i said hey i'd like to test drive one they laughed at me they go Pfft. No, you can drive one of the regular ones, and we can just tell you, you know, the R is much better, <laughs> but you got to place an order for it. So yeah. I did, and I placed an order. I get it maybe six or seven months later. But, um, but you're right. If you walk in, you want to test drive something, get the feel for it. It makes a big difference. Yeah. Um, so, so they announced the new Z. Yeah. You pick up the phone and you call Joe. I, I did. I yeah. called Joe and said, "Hey, you know, is I is." The Z Club of America, is that still a legal entity? And he goes, as a matter of fact, it is. And I said, perfect. Give it to me and let me run with it. And he's all on board. He's like, absolutely, no problem. So um, I had, so this gets us into the other conversation. Let me, I'll, I'll just finish that, that out. So then I, I take over. I, I decide this is what we're going to do. And I always just stayed true to what worked for us back in the day because it's the same cars, the same mentality, the same passion that flows courses through your veins y if you're a z guy you're, you're you're sorry you're stuck you know there's no there's like yeah i used to be in disease so i'm not into that no no you're always you may not own one but uh, you're 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 a lifer you're a lifer yeah. you yeah. notice them and you want to yeah scarlet a on your you know, <laughs> scarlet z, z yeah, yeah. yeah you know jeff uh Ga gabriel and i worked on uh, a documentary called pure drifting that we shot back in i think it's 2003 yeah, two or three, something like that. 2003. And yeah. that was the first time I had seen D1 drivers mm -hmm. in person out at Irwindale. Even in the parking lot, D1 guys came out to practice. And a couple of them brought their right-hand drive cars over on a boat from Japan. And one of them had a 300. And I remember seeing that guy. That guy was, I, I wish I could remember his name, but badass driver. I mean, mm -hmm. really amazing to see that car sideways going 90 miles an hour a foot from a K rail. It was yeah. just like, wow. Amazing, but such a big, heavy car for drifting compared to the Corollas and the other yeah. cars that people were using. But it was really impressive to see a pro Japanese driver take a 300 out and just 
throw spank it around, and just yeah. throw yeah. it around and just yeah. it, it was it was a they, jaw they, dropping. They created the art. They really did. Yeah, for for drifting. So, um, I'll just fast forward to this past month uh, in March. I uh, well, actually, it started a year ago. A year ago, uh, Vara, the Vintage Auto Racing Association, uh, had posted. I saw online that they were having an event as part of their um, annual racing schedule. They were going to have the very specific thing that was that was going to be called the All Japan Showdown where just Japanese cars were going to race. So when I saw that, I got contacted Vara right away, and I was like, I want in. You know, like, how do I, how do I be a part of this? And they were like, wow, we've never had anybody call. What, what do you want to <laughs> do? What do, do? <laughs> and I was like, well, I'll sponsor it. I'll, I'll buy all the trophies and stuff like that. And they are like, you'll buy trophies? And I was like, yeah, I'll buy trophies. Oh, okay. So now, you know, so we had the event. It worked out really great, very interesting. Got a call this past January. They said, hey, guess what? We're, we're doing that all japan race again do you want to come back and do it again i said absolutely but this time i got a different plan and they uh what i did was i contacted um four other prominent z clubs in southern california here the group z out of the anaheim area um empire z out in riverside san bernardino area west coast Datsun out of san fernando and um vintage Japanese motorsport or motor union and he's down in LA proper savant savant yeah exactly so the five clubs that you know we don't have turf wars or anything like that we all know each <laughs> other we all love each other it's really it's really like we all respect each other so much and it's we awesome. all have our own little different lane yeah. yeah you know and and that's why it works so well so I said guys I have this opportunity I did it last year I think we can do it again that and they were all on board I was like yes we could throw a, a, a really nice bash and then I said but wait let's not make it Z specific this is a golden opportunity for us to now bring the whole SoCal JDM community together mm. no one's done that SoCal has a a car culture that really isn't available anywhere else on the planet that I can Agreed. think of. Yeah, I and, agree. You know, so that's why I really, you know, jumped on this. It's like, it, it, it may be the Z guys who are leading the charge, but we want everybody. This is one giant group hug. Oh, smart. So the event worked out great for us. We only had like 60 days to whip it together. So there wasn't a lot of planning and stuff to market and understand <clears> and <throat> challenge people to try to tell us way in advance if they were coming so we had some clue is it going to be 20 people 50 people 500 people who's coming to this you know mm -hmm. we wound up bringing about 150 people no. out there which was more spectators than um vara i think had had at any at least for quite some time and the, even the folks at willow springs uh where we held the event they um were blown away by the extra people so we learned a lot of great lessons about okay good now we know how to make 2025's event even better how it will really resonate really work we'll have an opportunity to be way ahead on our marketing on and that sort of stuff so super super stoked that we got that done but most important and the reason i tell you all that is not to boast it's because that's what joe did in 1971. Mm. that's where i still just hang on to this legacy and i'm just going to continue that messaging going forth that's my Z Club of America story. And what you're what you're talking about here, you can just feel the momentum just yeah. from what you're talking about. So you're right, 2025 is going to be bigger, huge. And then and now that everybody, I mean, the whole world has seen it on West of Tulsa. Now it's yeah. going to just Absolutely. explode. You guys are going to have to pick up the chairs and come on out there, and we'll do the show out there. There Absolutely. you go. <laughs> yeah. Well, it, um, when we had um, Frank De Jesus on the show from um, OJCM, the old Japanese car meet guys, and um, he's connected to Savant as well, and they they do stuff together. And he, I think he would agree with you 100% because he's all about you know his meat is specific for only one thing it's got to be Japanese and it's got to be a classic yeah that's it you know and it's funny we went out Helm and I went out to his meat um, just a couple weeks ago and I haven't been out there for years but you find that how many young people are part of it and it's usually like the dads bring in their kids who are now 18 20 yep. years old yep. and driving the car that they had when they were 18 or 20 yeah. and the kids all into it and say yeah we're gonna do this but they're not trying to do like the new kid thing with like you know try to camber it out or make it like you know whatever you know fad that's been going on they're trying to be like i want to go old school with it i want to keep it like how my dad had i'm like that is cool man yeah and i, I feel like that is a 
cool thing because kids can't get into new cars these days, you know, affordably, you know. So they're going and trying to find older cars that they can mess with and maybe the older the better now, yeah. you know. So I think the other thing that's that's if we go back to the resurgence idea, um, track days are such a thing now. That mm -hmm. is such a huge business. Didn't exist for most of my racing career. It just wasn't a, wasn't really hardly a thing. Yeah. Now it's, you know, it's hedge fund companies that have little divisions that say, hey, let's go, you know, we'll start this up. And they're making money off of their, and they're traveling around the world or, you know, the country and, there's, it's really getting big. Yeah. Great opportunities for the youth to get in and start. Yeah. So now that they, they may not have to fix the car up yeah. or trick it out or roll cage it or anything, just come on out and have a fun day with the family and you're out there. These The number of events are getting huge. You, if you want to participate with one of these groups, you typically have to make sure that you buy your your way in you know, months in advance because it's, it's so popular right now. Yeah. Yeah. Again take me back to the legacy it's like get your japanese car onto a track go have fun yeah and you don't need to do much to it you know just safety equipment you know and seat belt and good tires and you're good yeah. to go you know yeah. and you can have a great time i had the most fun on at streets of willow which was my favorite track i had the most fun when my 240 was stock you know, when I started doing all this power stuff and I just when all the headaches happened and I was like, this is more of a headache than I wanted to deal with. But yeah. I just had fun going out there. And I, I think I agree with you. And what's sad is, especially in California, you know, where the number of tracks is very small and uh, getting smaller and getting smaller yeah. uh, across the country, too. But I hope that this uh, resurgence of track days, um, I mean, even Christina is putting on one with a, the, the Drift Depot team over at, mm -hmm. I forget where they're going to do it at, but. They, they've got events, you know, women focused events, but they don't want it to be just women. They want it to be everybody as well. You know, the more times we see this stuff, maybe somebody like one of these hedge funds guys, like, let's, let's build a new track, you know, get people off the streets doing stupid stuff. That's because that's how I started yep. drag racing on the streets. And then I moved it over to the track because I realized, oh, I don't have to worry about cops no more. Mm -hmm. I can, you know, trailer my car. Mm -hmm be safer, have more fun and not less worry and then go home and just, I won't do it on the street no more. Sure. You know, so I don't know. It'd be interesting to see if people will start, you know, hedge fund guys start or money guys just start putting money into facilities because I think it will do really, really well. It's it's happening. Yeah. It is just happening. Now talking about the youth and the resurgence of the Z Club, I would imagine you want to put a call out to some of the youngins, if you will, that are out there that you know, haven't joined the club, but it would be fun to bring in more youth. I, 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 I think I've been pretty successful in, in carving that, um, effectively for us. And sadly it's all on social media. It's sort of just how you have to communicate, but sure. you know, we really just function quite well on Facebook where I'm obviously reaching the older audience and Insta where I'm bringing you know the kids are getting out you right. know finding it more easily so you talk to both of those communities and and that's all the communication i need you know i don't need volume i need quality right i, yeah. I don't i don't I, you know i'm not into like oh my gosh you guys only have this number a thousand blah 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 you know it's like yeah but everyone i have they really are z owners we you know you yeah you, they really they are love into it, it and yeah. they really do come yeah, yeah, i feel yeah. like th that's you're speaking directly about west of tulsa because we don't have a huge following which we, by the way we hit 500 followers so thank you everybody thank you, thank you very Yay. much but you know what that 500 i'll tell you right now um i see the engagement with that 500 yeah they are not they believe in what we believe and that's what we care about is sharing these stories preserving the legacies and carrying them forward um that's really because everybody has a story and you know again i mean i'll sound like a broken record but this is the plug is that we care about your story you know your st everybody thinks that like you know all oh, my story is not that important not many people care like i guarantee you somebody will care yeah. about it because somebody could relate to that because yeah. you're a human being just like the other person you know so i feel like talking about the getting the youth involved in how you're connecting you're using a, a format that's well it's available to all of us we're using it too you know yeah. instagram is the, is a great way to connect but it's funneling everybody to the experience yeah. that's what you're trying to put together is the experience yeah. and it's not so much it's not just the z it happens to be the z that's your platform but it's that experience of everybody getting together sharing something in common and enjoying themselves there right yeah are you seeing more local chapters popping up um 
N- not in a in a great quantity. Um, there's a, a new club in the San Fernando Valley, Wild Ones, and they I, I know David and uh, Ariel. They they've been actively trying to put on car meets on a regular basis. They kind of get together every Wednesday night, and they're they're Z people, but they quickly let any other jdm in you know to their meets and they just uh, a few months ago formed their own so we'll see what they do i'm behind them i back them in any way that i can try to help promote their events that they're doing and stuff like that so there's that that's happening uh, i'll tell you what eluded me when i was putting together the stuff for this uh, all japan showdown event we did i had a hard time i mean you're you're trying to invite the jdm community so I was like, okay, great. Well, let me just contact all the Honda clubs. Let me get all the Mazda clubs. Let me go, go get the Subies. You know, let me get, you know. I had a hard time finding them. Mm-hmm. I'm not saying they're not there, but they weren't there, or at least not to, you know. So, um, and, and since 2020, when I was first getting the, you know, we were all sitting inside for COVID, I really started digging in. I did a lot of research on on car clubs. I was like, okay, how is this pandemic going to affect the social aspects of of a car club? It shouldn't Mm. kill the car club, but I can understand you guys all just going to have to talk to each other or have Zoom meetings or what do you, you know. (laughs) Yeah. And um, I was so disappointed by the number of clubs that just shut down, just stopped, just like Ice Age or apocalypse it just stopped you know? because as we emerged from the pandemic what was the one thing everybody wanted to do get together and get they out there to get and, together yeah, yeah. yeah. exactly yeah uh, exactly. christina hit on that she said she said that COVID hit did something to people in the car community because when we were able to come out again um it was a little bit more of like a friendlier more a tighter more camaraderie because we like i don't want that to ever happen again let's stay as close yeah. as we can and using social media to do that to at least break the ice to right. get the connection going and then um because i you know back in the in the 90s car clubs uh you know racing crews car clubs clicks whatever you want to call them they were everywhere that you know you can see a stick on everybody's cars from whatever club and i that has dwindled down i think now though the since everybody wants to be connected again and friendly and whatever they want to be one big group versus a bunch of little clicks although i do see some clubs at least locally here in ventura that are starting to come up but i think that idea of the car club maybe people don't know about it you yeah know? yeah you know this is exactly the stuff that i bang my head against the wall doing you know is trying to figure out what what does this mean what does how are we going to be how is it going to function and the one thing that came to me pretty quick on is okay if you're going to be the z club of america again and you really want to reach out to america again then there's there's not a lot of upside to me saying okay send me your 30 dollars and i'll send you this shirt and you'll get a weekly newsletter and a you know whatever the the classic traditional model right i'm not sure that works anymore what's what's the up you know yeah i think you're right to to what end so back to your question about you know have i seen new chapters uh no not not really some new clubs popping up that are same situation you know pandemic's over we're getting together and hey let's just make this a club it's it's a different form it's coming back in a different way i don't think you need chapters as much anymore because accessibility is better than it's ever been yeah i can reach somebody across the world not just across the city yeah. so yeah. maybe you don't need a chapter you need one big organization that everybody has the platform to communicate on um whether it be instagram or whatever but you know the z club or all z, z people from all over the world instead of i'm um, the z guy in the west coast the yeah, z guy yeah. so i guess east my coast. question would be this and so instead of are you seeing more chapters popping up let me ask you this if somebody's listening to this and they want to get involved, how do they get involved? Uh, how would they reach you? How, how would they? How do they? Well, because that's part of what we just talked about: big community. Yeah. If somebody's listening to this and they they got a Z or they have an interest in Z's, you know, how do they participate in this? Yeah. So the, uh, you know, this is this is one of the paradigms I had mentioned right before we started recording was that. Um, so I'm here, you know, in Southern California, and that's where we've got this chapter that operates and we have an, another chapter in Dayton, Ohio, which is serving our, our Midwest area and they're doing their own events and building things. So that works, it works in the same 
method is the old traditional without the the nuance of you know let's all get together and eat at Denny's on a Thursday night you know that sort of crap <laughs> yeah um, and and we Z Club again was originally in New Jersey so we still have a contingency there but I don't have a proper cha chapter so you, I do believe you have to have some boots on the ground if you're going to put on an event mm, right. someone who actually coordinates sure. that thing that doesn't mean that it has to be a full you know yeah, yeah. club or everybody stands around and votes you know who's going to do what and <laughs> yeah. sort of, you know <laughs> So to reach us is really, the nice thing is I don't have to work very hard at that anymore because everybody tells everybody through everybody, everybody blah, 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 you know, in mm -hmm. social media. So somebody who's part of, uh, is a BMW owner, but he happens to have a Z model. Guess what? They're calling me all the time. Yeah. They're like, I want to be a part of your stuff. And I'm like, no, you don't. Wrong Z. <laughs> You're Z wrong one. Yeah. But <laughs> well, they can reach you through the website. Yeah, of yeah, course. They, yeah, yeah zclubofamerica.com. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, we we do that. I work, I really wish I could have three of me because then I could really keep that thing moving, moving more. I get so much nice. We have stories people z owner stories that we tell there you can just if you're not you know the person that wants to tell a whole story just send us your picture of of you and your car you know we add that in there um i have a resource center in there that's got a bunch of diagrams on wiring or pistons or transmission cool. bolts yeah. all these kinds of stuff is, is in there uh we have a store in there that is is just you know some merchant apparel and stuff like that largely we got uh and it's expensive crap <laughs> because it's, <laughs> it is it's all this old vintage stuff that we used to have it's the old original patches from back in the 70s and yeah. 80s and yeah. the different that sort of stuff so there's not a lot of that inventory around so that's why i jack the prices up on it so, well it's limited makes supply sense. Yeah. exactly that's you know. it. but um you know and then there's um the, the, our legacy story is available to to the people and we have um it's, it's just it's it's growing it's going to keep going and, and keep going and I'll, I'll just keep making it a, a really nice home so that there is the there are those answers to those questions that people want to ask right well, i'm excited i'm glad you came in and oh, i'm stoked and Wait, this we is a great forgot, story we forgot something was that again uh to do well two things we forgot we forgot you mean at the top of the show yeah well we, okay we forgot yeah, the tip line but we forgot to ask our guest jeffrey here what's he driving oh yeah that's true yeah so my daily is uh, a 22 Nissan Armada. On brand. You're on brand. Absolutely. And the best part about that 22 is that for that year, Nissan really bolstered the tow package. Mm. So I've got an 8,500 pound. Oh, wow. Yeah, exactly. So not Is that a V8 still? It's a monster. Wow. I, I, don't even, I open the hood and I go, okay, sh close the hood. I, I don't even know what all Before that crap you, is. Right? Absolutely. Yeah. Like, I don't know what any of that shit is. <laughs> so, uh, but it sure makes towing the race cars around uh, a whole lot easier. That's really great. Yeah, you're right. I what, forgot to ask I want to know question. what the race cars are. Well, our, I think our viewers want to know what the race cars are. Uh, so I have a 260 chassis with a newly built stage two l24 in it and um one of the things of my checkered past is that i was in the racing school industry uh for a while i was the marketing manager for skip barber racing i went through the skip barber oh, yeah. programs oh cool that's how i developed my my skill set and um after eight years i sold that trucking company that i created to sponsor myself and i had enough money and went straight to skip barber again and said I need to work here. I'll sweep floors. I don't care what it is, anything at all. And sure enough, I got myself in there and I kind of went through the rookie stage, but everybody knew that I was already more mature and had a game going on, you know, and, and so worked myself up through the company and then became the marketing manager there and stayed there for a while. And then as things go, you know, you, it's time to go. And, and, uh, right after that, I had the opportunity. So as soon as I left there, and I don't, I don't remember how that connection happened, but do you guys remember Jim Hall Kart Racing School? Oh, yeah. yeah I know oh, Jim yeah. Hall. Yeah. I know yep. Jim Hall, too, because he hired me. He says, I understand you're you know, available. And I was like, yeah. And so I don't remember the details of how that worked out. But here's the best part of that story is uh, jo uh, Jim decided that he would uh, fly me out so I could come check out his school and be his marketing manager. And uh, I said, okay, great. I'm at Pocono this weekend. I was still on the East Coast. And, um, uh, you know, 
I'll, I'll, I'll fly me out Tuesday or Wednesday or something like that. So I'm out at the at, at Pocono with Joe Casella's GTU Z, and uh, it's a monster. And so I get to Jim Hall's place, and I'm thinking I'm pretty badass because now I'm driving a GTU car. You know? <laughs> I got skill, I got game. <laughs> And then he gets me into the cart, and it, it humbled my ass out so fast. <laughs> oh yeah, I was like, yeah. "This is ridiculous." Yeah, I I thought I had a knowledge base. I don't I don't know nothing. <laughs> wow. So I have such respect for carts and carting. Yeah, it is the ultimate training tool. Oh, for sure, absolutely. You cannot make mistakes because there's no horsepower to make up for it. Mm -hmm. you, you, so best training ever is is in carts. So uh, that's what got my out, gets me out to Ventura, because uh, I'm working for him. Oh. Yeah. So why were we on that? Your 260. Thank you. Yes. The 260. Yeah, the monster, yeah. yeah the yeah. 260 came out here yeah, with yeah. me. So, okay. Do we, are you really ready to quit? Because I can go on for no. hours. No. Yeah. <laughs> we're only 45 minutes okay. into it. Really, this is great. These are good. This is another story. So now it's time we're going to move out to, to California. Uh, Joe, Jim's offered me this job. I'm going to take it. I'm going to move from, from New Jersey. My 260, no, I don't have the 260. It's still a 240. And I asked the guys down at Joe Casella's Z Center. I said, please do some work to it. I forget what he asked. Anyway, they, they, I get a call from them. They say, you better come down here right now. I said, okay. What happened? Scary. So I get down there. Yeah, exactly. Never good, good words to hear. Yeah. Mm -hmm. The guys went to put the car up on the lift. And apparently the, the body, oh. the, the car just... Folded the, the rust. Uh, had, it started to fold in on uh, itself because uh, it was that was the. I had no idea, but the the chassis was done, oof. junk. But that motor, that particular motor, just was the creamiest, best L twenty four I had ever. I just loved that motor. So, turned out Casella had uh, a two sixty sitting in his lot that had no motor in it. I'm sitting here with this gem of a motor <laughs> and a. Uh, 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 origami Z. <laughs> so, so I had them throw the the that L24 into the 260, and so now I've got a car. I drive it all the way out here, make the move. I'm living in Ventura. Real recent after getting out here, I go to get in my car, and my car's gone. My <gasps> car got stolen uh, out of my apartment complex. And the funniest part for me is that I stood in that empty, like you had assigned parking slots, you know? I stood in that, like, forever. The, like it could hey, be hiding I, somewhere. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> How can this be? Did it roll I away? Was just, oh. I was just here. This is, this is where it belongs. And, I'm, and, uh. it, and then it occurred to me also, I was like, wait a minute. When I came home last night, I had no gas in this. I came, I rolled in on fumes. But it was okay because there was a Shell gas station right around the corner. So I was like, okay, I'll get that in the morning. So I report it to the police, tell them all the side that, yeah, sorry, no problem, blah, 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 blah. One year later, I assume the car has been dismantled. It's, yeah, Mexico, <laughs> yeah. who knows where it is. The parts are all over the place. It's gone. I get a call, and it's the Ventura police. And they say, are you the owner of this Lou 260Z with New Jersey license plates on it? And I said, as a matter of fact, I am. And they said, we have your car. And I was wow. like, you got to be kidding me. And they go, no. So the story is that they found it the next morning at the gas station right around, around the corner from me. <laughs> but because it had New Jersey plates and back in the day, we couldn't just go, you know, online and, and find out, you know, whose car it was from New Jersey. They put it in their impound and it spent more than a year in the impound. Oh, jeez. <laughs> and what the detective told me was that the cost to the police department for housing my car at that facility for more than a year exceeded the entire budget that the police department had for all their impounds for the year. <laughs> and that, that, that the cops were kind of in trouble because... But the, in fairness to them, they couldn't, you know, it's, I don't know why or how. I mean, you had my license plate on there. I still had the jersey place on there. So how they didn't find it. But anyway, I got the car wow. back. Wow. So they pickled your car so, for a year, basically. Yeah. So I, I had the car, got the car back. And, and by this point, I'm running a, a I drove a 924 uh, Porsche at that point. So I was like, no, no, I love my Porsche. I'm, I'm fine. I don't, you know, I'll just take this. I'm going to turn this into an ITS r racer and and. 
I'll, I'll have some fun with it. Well, the poor thing spent dang near three decades in storage. Didn't really ever get around to the project life, yeah, business, all the things you do. You just and and then one day had a phone call with a buddy of mine from New Jersey, childhood friend, and told him about all the great stuff I was doing in my world. And he says, "Well, what do you do for fun?" And that knocked me back. And I was like, uh. "He says, do you still have that car?" I said, "Yeah, I do." He says, "Go get it and start working on it." You know, sure enough. So now I put another ten years into the car of <laughs> just you know slowly building it up. So it's it's more in what would be the SECA's C production class car, but not completely technically. But the my point was that it's got two seats in that because I think I'd like to get back into teaching. Because while mm-hmm. I was at Skip Barber and Jim Hall, you're you know you're immediately an, an instructor, and then I actually became an instructor. I was an instructor for the Z Club of America, their events, you know, and so, and then when I left Jim Hall and got out of the racing school industry, um, I had this um, um, knowledge base of all my competitors, all the racing schools around the world, and. I thought that was a terrible waste to just take that knowledge base and run off with it. So I published a book called The Racing School Directory for seven years. I self-published oh. a book. Oh, wow, that's right cool. Here. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And it was always a, it was available on Amazon, which was, at the time, it was just like an online library. That's all Amazon was, mm-hmm. you know. They were yeah. just into books, and, and that's how I got my product out there and did that sort of stuff. So that's that uh-huh. part of the story. I would encourage you to do that, one, because um, teaching, especially in motorsports and car Trades. I mean, we we've been talking about this for the last couple of weeks about dying trades, yeah, and how things are just dying off and things that need to be passed down because things you can't learn in a classroom. Yeah, that's one of them. Yeah, you know, uh, teach instruction on um, racing or uh, driving, basically. Um, I, and I actually just got this idea, and I think um, being the executive producer of the show, we're going to do it. I'm not going to ask anybody. <laughs> is that um, oh, what we're going to do <laughs> is we're going to go to a track day. Okay. And you're going to put CJ and uh, Dan and Helm no oh boy. in the driver. I mean, I'm, I'm a willing participant, so you don't have to worry about me. But these are all people that, that have either never been to a track day or never even thought about doing it because it's just not something they're into. Especially Helm. You haven't met him yet, but um, he thinks all that stuff is cool. He's never done it. He's a scared little <laughs> Filipino guy. <laughs> Can he do it in Mercedes wagon? That, well, sure. But see, the thing is, is that if... When I got instruction on the track, it was the best day yeah. of my driving career because I learned things like little things, the less less is more kind of thing. Yeah. When I learned that stuff on the track, I was like, oh, my God, I don't need a lot of power. I just need to know how to drive. Yeah. And I had the time of my life. It was the best thing. And I did it in a, my when my S13 was stock. That's why I said I had the most fun when my cars were stock because yeah. you just it's just you and driving. You don't need it. I had 140 horsepower, maybe, mm-hmm. you know. And I feel like that instruction that I got that day was life changing. And I feel like that's something that a lot of people, especially younger people, yeah. need to experience. And people who want to go drifting, that's cool. And people want to go road racing, that's cool. But someone needs to teach people these things. And they're far and few between yeah. one that are qualified and two that are willing to do it. Yeah. So I would highly encourage you to do that and we would be glad to be a part totally. of that because I want to throw all you guys especially yeah, Helm yeah. into the driver's seat because it'd be hilarious you know <laughs> one of the coolest things about teaching is it makes you a better uh, driver yourself yeah because as I sit there and I find these little nuanced things that oh this person just has a you know I gotta kind of get through their brain a little bit I've told them four times already they're not doing it and you, you really kind of but you learn more about yourself because then you, you're like, yeah, I got to practice what I preach. I can't, sure. I can't, you know, do it this way and then go do some other crap my own way. You know, mm-hmm. it's like, that's not, that's not going to work. Okay. So, yeah. All right. Well, we got a plan going forward. Sounds like Gabe just made it for us. Oh yeah. I think yeah. it's going to be, I think it's going to be great. So the right. other car I have then is a, is a, uh, it's a 71 240Z that now has a 280 punched out to 30. Full GT2 car was built buy some hacks somewhere <laughs> <laughs> it's got some muy feo pieces to it that I, try, I put decals on shit <laughs> <I'd> stop, <yeah. laughs> but the car was built yeah i think in the mid uh, 80s and uh, so it's it's a true vintage racer that's been i've got three or four uh, scca logbooks to go with it so that's wow. that's my new favorite wow. toy and that's i fun. just uh, it and we got 
the motor finally built and into the car just a couple of days before this All Japan Showdown. So the motor is not broken in yet. It's been heat cycled a few times, but it's not ready to go full out. So anyway, I took it to the, the Showdown event just for display purposes, show off, show and tell time, yeah, yeah. Know, that sort of thing. People like looking at it, and I'm they, sure. Yeah. Oh, yeah. oh, yeah. It's a, it's it's red, white, and blue in the Bob Sharp color. Oh, skin cool. And, and that sort of thing. So That was one of the things about the Nissan race cars. They were the coolest looking race cars back yeah, in the day, always. especially the the like the still in 300ZX, yeah. the, the, the GT. To GTU car or whatever. Yeah, yeah. well, it was actually G GTO. GTO, yeah. yeah. That thing. I mean, I have a. I had a poster over there. You're giving it away to steal an event. Yeah. I was like, oh, such a cool looking yeah. race car, dude. <laughs> and then, then the red, white, and blue colors. I loved it. I thought yeah. it was the coolest thing. Always, always been. So, yeah. You know. And if you're going to be Z Club of America, hello, why not be red, white, and blue? <laughs> yeah. yeah. Right. Yeah. Like, yeah. Like, that's definitely on brand. <clears throat> that's cool. Yeah. So I love that thing too. It's a beast. It's a monster. We appreciate you coming. I, down the road <laughs> and coming down to visit us at West of Tulsa. It's, 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 it's so, very can interesting. Can I just tell you one more thing too sure. about Tulsa? Tell, sure. I, I on on a show I was producing for Outdoor Channel. I think I wound up working with them in Tulsa. Had to go there on and off probably a couple months at a time. And I remember that some restaurant that we was convenient to us, some place they did deep fried avocados. Oh, I had never even Deep heard fried. that. Uh, never in even, Tulsa too. In huh? Tulsa of all places, wow. they they take the they somehow know how to skin it so that you're standing there holding a raw meat avocado, and they do a deep fry to it. Nothing happier has ever gone down my throat. <laughs> <laughs> that that's the bomb. So, so we got to make a trip to Tulsa we, just to we try did. it out and figure out what delicious. place. Yeah, it, it was really good. killer. Dang, wow. deep fried really avocado good. in Tulsa. In Tulsa. Yeah. You heard it here, folks. So, yeah. There you go. Heard her that, for the first time. That's yeah. <laughs> <laughs> All right, Jeffrey Wilderth, we really appreciate you coming yes, and talking sure to it. Very interesting. It. And um, again, if anybody's interested in participating, joining women. Women, too. Yep. Absolutely. Women. Yep. Wanted. And yes. also, too, again, um, the reason why Jeffrey's here is because he reached out to us and shared a little tidbit about what he's doing and we of course thought it was awesome and we wanted to share it with the world yeah so um i want to encourage everybody who's listening if you've made it this far into the show to uh reach out to us send us a message through the tip line here's the plug there you go <laughs> and um or just dm us but if you can message us on the tip line because um we want to hear your story and jeff uh, thank you for your story your story is amazing and i hope the Z Club America takes off again and um, yeah. you start teaching again because I think that would be amazing to see. Oh, thank you very much for that. All right. yeah, Thanks really for joining us. It. Love All this right. opportunity. Love you guys. And you're doing great stuff. Thank you. Thank thank you. We need it. We need it. All right. So like, follow, and subscribe. We also have our YouTube channel. Thank you. And we thank you very much for listening and for watching. And we will see you west of Tulsa.